That I do not have a finger on. Parliament it deals with the government, their rules and regulations. Debates get uh, solved in, solved inside the parliament. It's a place where they make decisions, policies, regulations. They debate on stuff about Fiji, trying to make the right decisions. Trying to keep the country going. They just debate and talk. Basically, they talk about what's happening in, within the government. Um, actually, I'm not really sure about uh, what uh, happens in the parliament. We have all heard of parliament, but how many of us exactly know what happens in parliament? Or what happens behind the scenes? Well, let's find out together. We all learned something about Parliament in school. But what is Parliament really meant to do? This is where the Parliament that makes laws for the people to benefit the people. And very important uh, to members of Parliament is the voices of the people. So basically Parliament is where our elected representatives meet to create laws and to debate how our country should be run. It is also where the rules and structure of how our government operates is decided. So when did Parliament start? Would you believe 1874? It wasn't really a parliament in those early days because we were still a colony of Britain at the time. But the first parliament type body was the Legislative Council, which was administered by a Governor General. And he was appointed by the Queen of Chamber England. Of the Legislative Council next morning. It gives me great pleasure to learn the way in which the different racial communities in Fiji have succeeded in living and working together in harmony. Then in 1970, we gained our independence from Great Britain and established ourselves as a true parliamentary democracy. Fiji's first new parliament since independence began with traditional ceremony. The first election was held in 1972, which saw Ratusa Kamisesemara elected as Fiji's first prime minister. He walks into the chamber and there's total silence, you know, that kind of aura they had. You know, you have uh, people like Nibitoni Lenengila, who's a bit of a character, who be choking from this side to the other side. And as soon as Rotomaro walks in, there'll be total silence. Everybody's up this. The whole house, there was sort of a kind of an aura. We are now in Fiji's parliament continued to develop and grow, despite the disruption of parliamentary rule on a number of occasions. After our return to democracy following the introduction of a new constitution in 1989, a new parliament building was built at Veuto. From 1992 to 2006, parliament met here. And for all communities in our multi-ethnic and multicultural society, your mandate of care is not limited to your own constituency. In 2013, a new constitution was introduced which created a new parliamentary structure, reducing the two houses of parliament to only one. Following the promulgation of this new constitution, Fiji began moving toward a general election to elect the first members of parliament since the end of parliamentary democracy in 2006. Although earlier Fiji parliaments had two separate houses of parliament, the current structure has only one house. Before I specifically speak on this. In 2014, our government decided to move Parliament back here to its original location. So let me start with ABCD. As a lead up to the first election to be held under our new constitution, in 2013, the old Parliament building underwent a transformation. This is the Parliament Chamber, the cockpit of uh, democracy, the heart of Parliament. 
Following the election of 2014, the new Members of Parliament convened in refurbished Parliament buildings. Like any important organization, Fiji's parliament needs a detailed set of rules and structure to operate. Because of its links to the United Kingdom during colonial times, Fiji's parliament borrowed a lot of its basic rules and procedures from other parliaments in the Commonwealth, such as the United Kingdom. It's absolutely uh, important that the legislature is independent of the executive which is the government. The Speaker of the Parliament must have the absolute control and independence of the functions of the Parliament. So, absolutely important. One of the figures in Fiji's Parliament that was borrowed from the original British Parliament structure is the Sergeant at Arms. Their role is to keep order during meetings of Parliament. Historically, the sergeant at arms were armed men who were retained by kings. They often used the mace as their weapon of choice. Fiji's parliament also has a mace. When the speaker of parliament comes into the parliamentary chambers, they are led by the mace bearer. Like a traditional Itauke warrior, the mace bearer carries the mace of parliament, which represents the authority of the speaker. The mace has a colorful history. It began as the war club of Ratuseru Vakumbao, the Wunivalu of Mbao, who gave the war club as a gift to Queen Victoria of Great Britain in 1874. It was a symbol of Fiji becoming part of the British Empire. The war club was embellished with silver palm leaves and doves when Ratu Vakumbao first converted to Christianity. Like this we call the war club. I took two viku to run the nimbao, the Sarat of the Kumbos War Club, just given to the Queen. The club was returned to Fiji by King George V in 1932 and became a symbol of the government's authority ever since. Maybe no mace, no parliament. It's authority of the speaker. The mace was nearly stolen by rebels in the year 2000 when George Spade and his followers took over parliament. They took the mace and they hide it under the the speaker's table in the old parliament. And the whole night is on Friday, Saturday night. The security guard uh, was sleeping and I, I told him, you can sleep, I can take over to... This the same time I grabbed the mace and went out. The mace is placed on the central table in parliament chambers where the crown always points to the government side of the chamber. Another emblem of Fiji's parliament is the speaker's chair. Yeah, this chair was a donation from the government of India um, to celebrate the independence in 1970. Members gathered in the foyer for the presentation of a gift from the government of India to mark Fiji's independence, a magnificently carved speaker's chair for parliament. It is ornately carved with symbols of power and strength to reflect the position of the speaker who sits in it. This is where the Secretary General to Parliament and the Deputy Secretary General to Parliament sit. They advise uh, the speaker and the members of Parliament on procedural matters. To run the sitting of Parliament effectively, there are 70 staff members who work behind the scenes who ensure that our democracy works. Overseeing this team is the Secretary General to Parliament, who is responsible for the overall management of Parliament. So we need to consider that. The OHS uh, committee will need to make that consideration by making an assessment. Under the Secretary General is the Director of Legislature and the Deputy Secretary General. Together, they provide key support for the Secretary General on the procedures of Parliament. Uh, she and I are the two uh, procedural people here. Mm -hmm. uh, we both happen to be lawyers by training. We, we do the research, we prepare suggested uh, points, and then ultimately it's the Speaker who decides whether that is the direction she's wanting to go. Under the Legislative Process Division is the Tables and Journals Department. We note every activity in the House within the minutes. The Hansard 
they take the whole whatever each speaker uh, says inside parliament they take care of that for us it's just uh, if there's a vote we take note of the votes the name for the tables unit comes from the fact that during the proceedings in parliament they sit at the center of the chamber at a long table they manage the procedural affairs of parliament also under legislative process division is the Hansard unit, who transcribe all discussions in Parliament. Our unit, the Hansard unit, so we are responsible for producing the Hansard reports when Parliament sits. And also when the standing committees meet, we do provide verbatim notes to the committees. The name Hansard comes from a printer in 18th century London who was the first official printer to the Parliament in Westminster. They actually type whatever they hear and they make sure that it's grammatically correct and that is saved in a folder for us editors to edit. The Hansard reports are verbatim reports on the discussions in Parliament but essentially document the entire debate and comments heard. Hansard reports and other parliamentary papers are stored here in the parliamentary library. Here we serve the needs of the uh, members of the parliament. Actually, we get a lot of requests from the members of parliament. Um, they are mainly, the request is based on our um, gazettes, on our acts, legislations, bills, hensards. If they, they are working on a bill to be passed in uh, the parliament, they will look at the principal acts, what was done before. So that's what we are going to do today, is to, just to help each other understand what is happening inside the chamber and also outside the chamber. Before any parliamentary session takes place, a lot of behind the scenes work needs to be done. The Friday before the sittings, we sit down together as, uh, as heads to talk about how to prepare, what do we anticipate, how do we address it. You what we discussed in the same thing, is it? This preparatory work includes daily briefings with her team on the schedule for each day's session and how they will keep the MPs on schedule. Whether we are expecting people, uh, delegates, school children coming into the chambers, it's important for us to know so that we advise our Honourable Speaker. The SG and her team also perform mock parliament sessions so that they all understand what to expect and the proper procedures for moving the schedule forward. I would probably... Are you sure? Yes. The way people become members of parliament is to be a candidate in an election. Under the present constitution, elections are normally held every four years. To stand for election, people have to be independents or candidates of a registered political party so that they will be on the ballot. If they win enough votes and other candidates in their party win enough votes, their party can take part in parliament. The party or coalition of parties who wins the most votes forms the government. The parties with fewer votes make up the opposition. In Fiji's parliament, there are two sides, the government and the opposition. For the government side, the leader of government is the prime minister, who is the head of his party. Their party also has a leader of government business. Well, as leader of government business, uh, it's quite an important group. Again, it's uh, uh, ensuring that government business takes priorities in the days that we are allocated. So it's the arrangement of the, the speakers uh, who contribute in the motions in the debates uh, and the preparatory work again. Uh, we have to be making sure that uh, all the preparatory work. So it's a lot of work. It's more of a coordination to make sure that uh, government is well prepared. While the government's role is to set the direction for the various government ministries, the opposition has an important role too. Primarily, is to ensure that we can form an alternative uh, government. It's really monitoring also and supervising what uh, the government is doing, saying here, and what is really happening on the ground. The job of the government is to govern. The job of the opposition is to hold the government to account. The leader of the opposition is often called the shadow minister to the prime minister. My role as uh, opposition leader is to ensure that we have a um, healthy debate in, uh, in parliament and we also have shadow ministers in our, um, on our side of government 
that uh, ensure that we are also covering all the uh, portfolios from uh, the government side. While the government names some of its members to be ministers for various government ministries, the opposition names its own members to be what are called shadow ministers to the government ministers. Individually, the shadow ministers hold the minister responsible to account so that the people, you know, democracy is about the people having the understanding, the opportunity to have the voices of both the minister and the shadow minister. But for the shadow minister is to hold the government uh, uh, in check in terms of the policies that they are introducing in, in education, in the education sector, and also uh, develop alternative policies to, to counter uh, what the ministry, what the minister is doing, what the government is doing. That's uh, being a, a shadow minister. For each major political party in parliament, one MP is given the role as the whip for their party. The whip's role is the party enforcer, who ensures that each member votes and attends sessions for the party. The name whip comes from the UK, where whips were originally hunter's assistants that would keep the hounds from straying and drive them back into the pack. You see in the table there's a register of attendance. We note that uh, the, the register is uh, filled by everybody. And uh, when we go down, we must have that attendance in case of voting. A motion is moved. We must ensure that uh, at, at any given time we have uh, people there. The role for, of an opposition whip, uh, of any whip, is to get his flock together. Uh, but first thing, my first duty is to uh, work behind the scenes with all parties, which you do at regular intervals. I'll give an example. During the budget debate, the whips got together and put a plan in place on the type of debate, the timing of debate, and who was always going to speak, the betting order. Uh, these were some of the things that we did prior to coming to Parliament. Just because members of parliament win enough votes to become parliamentarians doesn't mean they already know how parliament operates. Training sessions and workshops supported by development partners such as UNDP and donor partners are conducted to increase the MP's understanding of parliamentary procedures and the many rules and structures that help keep parliament flowing smoothly. One of the most important sessions in Parliament is the tabling of the budget. This is when government MPs propose their entire budget for the coming year. Special guests from the diplomatic missions and leaders of business and industry are all invited to attend this important sitting. Security is tight for these formal sittings. Special police officers, security officers and electronic surveillance are all used to ensure the security of the proceedings and the members present. Before the minister went inside, we have to scan him or her here. We have to lock uh, certain items that is not allowed inside the, the parliament. That is uh, basically our rules. The budget is really a blueprint for the policy directions the government will take in the coming year. <laughs> budget debates can get heated at times, with members of the opposition criticizing or questioning the government's decisions. Despite the conflicts that arise during the budget debate, the members on both sides of the chamber meet together for refreshments and chat together like old friends. I don't uh, make enemies uh, out, of, uh, out of the uh, Honourable Minister because I make sure that the relationship is uh, good. Yeah, in the House, of course, we can say anything that we want. But when we go outside there, I can hold his hands, we can go and eat together. And this is uh, another outside aspect of uh, being, uh, you know, keeping that relationship on a positive uh, note. And uh, that's how I, I, I look at it. But the budget debate is news, and the news media comes in full force to report on the discussions and present the public with an independent view of the government's proposals for the country.
During all parliament proceedings, one person is in charge of controlling its flow and conduct, and that is the Speaker of Parliament. Her role is to chair the proceedings, uphold the rights and privileges of the members of parliament, and ensure that the discussions maintain the honour and dignity of parliament. So my role is like a referee. I have the rules and the procedures of the House that has been uh, uh, entrenched in the, um, in the standing orders and to ensure that members of parliament uh, adhere to those rules. The current Speaker of Parliament, Dr. Chiko Loveni, is the first woman to be elected as Speaker. I have no qualms about uh, uh, having so many members of parliament who are males uh, and got the, the leaders uh, of the country uh, who are the players and I am being the referee for. As a break from British tradition, the speaker no longer wears the traditional wig in parliamentary sessions unless it is the formal opening of parliament. Until I went and visited um, the Westminster uh, parliament and I noticed that the speaker was not wearing a wig. And I was very happy because this, this can be very uncomfortable for me uh, in Parliament as well. So he was not wearing wig. And uh, in Scotland, the uh, speaker does not wear wig. Wales, no wig. Australia, no wig. New Zealand, no wig. So I came back and I said, no, why do I have to wear a wig? <laughs> Before going down to parliamentary chambers, the speaker meets with her team discussing the order of the proceedings and getting briefed on issues. She also gathers with her team for a brief prayer. The chambers of parliament are divided into specific areas. And this is the public uh, gallery where the members of the public can sit. It can sit a hundred people at a time. And uh, in front here, just in front of the public gallery, are the Hansard reporters who record everything that is said and done in the house. And the records are available uh, publicly afterwards. To keep the public informed of the happenings in Parliament, sessions are televised and the audio is recorded. In this way, the sessions of Parliament are available to anyone in Fiji who has a TV or radio. A lot of the real business of Parliament is not handled in the form of debates in chambers though. It is done through the meetings of committees. There are six main committees, like the Public Accounts Committee and the Justice, Law and Human Rights Committee, which include both government MPs and opposition MPs. These committees do the real analysing of government's proposed laws and policy implementation. All committee meetings are open to the public and are often attended by members of the media. This helps bring the activities of the MPs and Parliament to the public's attention. This includes the committee that oversees the process of elections. Committees in Fiji's parliament hold a great deal of influence. If someone is summoned to appear before a parliamentary committee, they are legally bound to come. Refusal to attend a committee meeting is like refusing to attend a court case. A subpoena can be issued to force you to attend the committee or risk going to jail. As representatives of the people of Fiji, it is important to make parliamentarians accessible to the people of Fiji. To help achieve this, many MPs go out to hold meetings with members of the public. In some cases, you are treated unfairly. You can also bring a complaint to us. These consultations give MPs the opportunity to meet with members of the public to explain government policies and activities. They also get to hear the public's views on these policies and often have to answer questions raised by members of the public. Mm -hmm. 
MPs visit select communities throughout Fiji to get a sense of the concerns and priorities of those communities. These visits help provide a direct dialogue between members of the public and members of parliament. It's just to come and hear them out uh, in terms of uh, how they feel about uh, government services that's uh, been accorded to them, whether it's uh, in the education sector or the health sector or anything that they would like to, to bring up. Another way for Parliament to be accessible to the public is through public forums such as the Speaker's Debate. Seven minutes to allow for plenty of time for questions and debate. I will be as strict with the time limit tonight as I am in the Parliament Chamber. These debates provide a forum for government MPs, opposition MPs and industry representatives to discuss a number of issues of national importance. The debates also give the opportunity for members of the public to raise issues. What will the government do to at least minimize the number of people begging for money sitting on our streets? The official opening of Parliament is a formal occasion. This is when the President comes to Parliament to sanction the proceedings and show that Parliament has his support as the official head of government. The formalities of the opening of Parliament were again borrowed from the United Kingdom, whose traditions for this event date back to the 16th century. After greeting the President, the Speaker escorts the President into the chambers where he takes his place in the Speaker's chair. We come together today to officially open the 2016 session of the Parliament. The opening of Parliament is usually attended by senior members of the diplomatic corps, senior members of the judiciary, and of course, all of the members of Parliament. After officially opening the parliament, the president vacates the chair for the speaker and the session continues. It is one of the few times that the speaker wears the formal wig. To help the public understand the role and processes of parliament, the Civic Education Unit at Parliament undertakes a large number of educational activities. The role of the Civic Education and Media Unit is to educate the public about Parliament, the roles and functions of Parliament, the works that Parliament is carrying out, and importantly, how they can actively participate in the, in the whole process. The people are a vital aspect of the whole democratic process. They should know what Parliament is doing, what works Parliament is doing, and how they can contribute in this uh, whole process. Two of the educational activities in Parliament are really exciting. These are the Youth Parliament and the Women's Parliament. During these mock parliaments, women and youth from all walks of life get to act out the role of members of Parliament. Uh, we convene the Youth Parliament and uh, Women's Parliament uh, to give an opportunity to youth and women to come to Parliament and learn more about Parliament. Uh, at the same time, they can practice and uh, see how members of parliament actually do their stuff in parliament. Let's be clean in, in the way that we lead. Let's lead based on what you have in front of you and how to progress from there. A detailed selection process is done to find what they feel are the most suitable candidates for the women's parliament. This is like a, a selection committee as well. We're actually going to select uh, from the numbers of uh, nomination that we have received. An effort is made to get women from various ages, ethnic backgrounds and parts of the country. Uh, we are empowering the women and uh, also giving them a voice, also at the same time letting them practice what actually goes uh, in Parliament. At the same time we're kind of motivating them, encouraging them that uh, this is also a place for the women. The women chosen are often already leaders in their communities or involved in public work. Many of these women may be future candidates for Parliament. Honourable Members, the Honourable Speaker. Parliament staff have a detailed practice session with the women, advising them of the various protocols and procedures required for parliamentary sittings. 20% of that in a week 
is only $40. Bus fare from here to Nursery is $1.60, $1.50, $2 at 10 o'clock. So is that fair? The actual women's parliament gives the women an opportunity to not only practice speaking in parliament, but to actually make statements that can be brought to the attention of actual MPs. And I will support the bill. My government has pride in actually supporting this bill. The traditions and workings of our parliament are still relatively new compared to those in many other countries. But its overall goal, to give a voice to all Fijians in the major decisions made for our country, is as important here as it is anywhere else. Our democracy is not carved in stone. It is developing and adapting and growing, just as our country is. The more of our people who understand and participate in Parliament makes the institution more robust. And this makes our country stronger, now and into the future should hear what other people say. I think parliament is the body which needs to be governed very properly because people believe them. And they should be very sensible in addressing the country as a whole. Because parliament is parliament for the people uh, and that people must feel that they own parliament.